Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, folks, into hour number two. We've got so much massive news, so many important things we haven't even gotten to yet. We haven't recapped uh, the final developments at Bilderberg 2014 and how important this year's coverage was. I wouldn't say as big as last year, but uh, with thousands of protesters, but it was definitely a big year with a lot of foreign coverage. David Knight's going to be covering that in the third hour with a special guest from England. Paul Watson's coming up in about 20 minutes. He'll be riding shotgun with David Knight as well. But David, getting back into the secret experimentation, this is only the tip of the iceberg. What else is going on we don't know about? And when the group you're affiliated with and worked with caught them you know, gassing people in hospitals, no one got in trouble That's right. Uh, this year. Uh, and, and then now will anyone get in trouble killing uh, preemies, cutting their oxygen off? I mean, it's just getting incredible. That's right, Alex. I thought one of the interesting things out of this article was it said that uh, nine months after they had a public meeting to examine this, NIH and HHS officials have yet to propose a remedy to avoid a repeat of the controversy. Well, of course, because when it was exposed about the EPA testing at the University of North Carolina, the group I was involved with filed a restraining order, tried to get a temporary restraining order. The judge uh, turned that down. They've now been rebuffed throughout the different levels. So the government is fine with this kind of stuff. And, of course, they're not going to get anything from the NIH to, to keep from having a repeat of this. It keeps on going. But let me read you this quote from a, an, an internationally recognized expert on research ethics. This is a Dr. Michael uh, Karame or Karome. I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. But he said, the word unethical doesn't even begin to describe the egregious and shocking deficiencies in the informed consent process for the study. He said parents of the infants who were enrolled in this study were misled about its purpose. They were misled to believe everything was being done in the name of standard care. Therefore, there were no predictable risks to their babies. And yet we see they have tremendous risks. Many of them have had serious vision disorders because they got too much oxygen. Many others have been brain damaged because they didn't have sufficient oxygen. At least one of the three uh, that she's talking about specifically in her article died. So that's the situation. David, this is too important. Uh, Paul Watson's going to be joining you in the next segment. I want you to start the next segment. I'm going to hand the baton to you right now. I'd like you to go back into these numbers and just yeah. boil down this mingala level stuff for people and put bookends on it for them so they understand the elitist mentality and then uh, get into all the other news you're going to be covering today. Uh, what else uh, are you planning to get to? I know Watson's adding the link to the Justice Department video in his article where Holder said the main threat is domestic groups. They're setting up domestic task forces to go after anybody that isn't a total criminal and anybody that loves freedom. What else are you going to be covering today, David? Well, you know, Alex, this is a, short, a story coming from Cheryl Atkinson. You remember she was a reporter who left CBS. She was absolutely fed up with the way the news was controlled and censored to promote an agenda. And so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about how we're seeing real journalists stand up, like this young teenager, Andrew Demeter. Now, he was an entrant into the Paul Revere contest. He had several excellent entries in there. And, of course, he really embarrassed Nancy Pelosi just by asking her direct questions about the NSA's activity. Let's in get into that. A absolutely. Because uh, absolutely. Hit, hit, exactly. Come back for people. Let's hit that story about the kids and then explain how it's a real journalist who, who, who did Fast and Furious, you name it, who left CBS because she was being censored, and now she's exposing this evil. We're the real journalists. Ladies like that are the real journalists, and we'll end up with the audiences and do the right thing and destroy the globalist uh, just by you know, virtue of truth-telling. And that's why they want to censor the web and want to get rid of whistleblower protection, because they're scared of the press. They tried to buy off the press. That just discredited the press. Now that the new press has risen with Drudge and Infowars and WorldNet Daily and so many others, they now are going to try to shut us down free speech-wise. That's why we're going to race listeners to explode in size, to get up on our feet fully, and to really uh, give the globalists a run for their money and to stop their censorship. That's why people shouldn't take for granted the fact that we're on air and that we'll be here next week. 
only spreading the word and supporting us will do it. So we need that call to arms. David Knight, great job at Bilderberg 2014. Your wife and uh, Josh Owens and the rest of the crew. I hand you and Paul Watson the baton right now. Give them hell, brother. We'll be right back. Alex Jones signing off. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Security alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. But the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulting us. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at InfoWars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative. Destroy Prison Planet TV. You've got to set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's because you can feel it. I don't know what it is. Ralph just won't pay any attention to me. When he comes home from work, all he ever does is play video games and go to sleep. It's like I don't even exist. Oh, Betty, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? If the answer to this question is yes, then listen carefully. Toxic pesticides, GMO foods and additives, BPA plastics, contaminated water supplies, many of these toxic additives are deliberately engineered to attack and weaken human masculinity. It's part of the eugenics population control movement. Look it up. If men are more interested in online gaming than they are in their wives. A serious population crisis is soon to follow. Energize the man in your life with super male vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. It's designed to aid the body in ways that help invigorate your natural systems without artificial testosterone, completely free of GMOs, harmful additives, gluten, and is made right here in the USA. Get your super male vitality right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here, and I'll be joined with Paul Joseph Watson. And later on in the show, we're going to have Richie Allen from the UK give us a British perspective on Bilderberg. He's been watching it very closely, as we have. Paul and I were both there in Copenhagen. And uh, this year was a bit different in several different ways. I guess uh, no two years are alike. Uh, we learned some things. We're going to be talking about that in the third hour with Richie Allen. We were just talking to Alex about this breaking report from Cheryl Atkinson. Now, she is a journalist who left CBS, and now she's working in an independent mode because she was tired of having her stories controlled. She said uh, that she resigned because she feels like the mainstream media is heading down a dangerous path with attempts to censor or block stories that don't align with their preferred agenda. Those are her words. Those are our words as well. That's why we were at Bilderberg. For the longest time, that place didn't even exist because the mainstream media heads blocked any information about that and then ridiculed anybody who reported on it. Now they're still at the ridicule point. Uh, they can no longer credibly say that it doesn't exist because there are too many people out there reporting that it in fact does. Perhaps if people realize that they were lied to the existence about Bilderberg at the same time that heads of major media organizations like the New York Times, like the Washington Post, like the Wall Street Journal were in attendance inside Bilderberg 
and they were telling people that it didn't exist, perhaps at that point, people will start to say, hmm, why is it that 150 of the most powerful people politically, uh, security, spies, bankers, multinational corporations, why are they meeting here? And they're telling us that they're not meeting here and they've got tremendous amounts of security. Maybe then they'll start to wake up and start to look at what is being done there. And we have a lot of quotes from the people over the years as to what they have produced there. But getting back to journalism, I think this week is a real highlight of what the difference is between the fake media and the real media. Now, this week marks the 25th anniversary of the crackdown at Tiananmen Square. That'll be tomorrow. That'll be when the government said, we've had enough, and they finally moved against them. And as I was abroad, there were a lot of articles about what's going on in China. And there was a quote from an army general. He said he went to these meetings and he absolutely refused to use his division against the protesters. He said, I don't want to be on that side of history. I don't want to be remembered as a murderer. Well, they don't remember these people as murderers in China. Most of the people there don't know anything about it. Because for 25 years, there's been no news about what happened at Tiananmen Square inside of China. They have taken it out of the textbooks. They've taken it out of the news stories. That's what we don't want to see happen here. So Cheryl Atkinson's story, not only what happened with the government-backed study, and this, again, I want to repeat this. This is 1,300 premature babies. People who will do these kind of experiments to babies who are struggling to breathe. Babies with tubes all over them to keep them alive. And what did they do? What was the response of our government to play games with them, to play God with them, to adjust the level of oxygen? And again, as I mentioned, too much oxygen, the babies go blind. Too little oxygen, they get brain damage or death. And that is what happened. A government that can do this is morally capable of doing anything. And we've seen this over and over again. In the story that we broke a couple of years ago, at InfoWars about the medical experimentation at the University of North Carolina where the EPA was trying to make a case for greater regulations and in order to do that they were perfectly willing to make people sick or kill them. Lisa Jackson had just testified before Congress that she thought there were more people be that were dying of particulate matter than people who were dying of cancer and that was an obvious lie and Markey, the congressman who uh, worked with that, they had already rehearsed before what they were going to do. And, and he's coaching her. You can, you can tell because he even, he even steps on her lines at one point. It was really an obvious nonsense. But people didn't die there. But they were trying to get people who would be sick. They were searching for people who already had respiratory illnesses, who already had heart illness and what they did then was they exposed them to levels that the EPA already said were fatal. They exposed them to levels that were 70 to 100 times what the EPA was maintaining were already fatal levels. Why? So that they could grow their bureaucracy, so that they could grow the regulations, so that they could shut down coal plants. Now, what is the agenda with the National Institute of Health that would cause them to go in and deprive premature infants of oxygen? Is this just out of intellectual curiosity? Because we already know what that does. They're trying to find a sweet spot. When I, would, when I got my scuba diving certificate, I was told that was the way they had developed the, the uh, bins tables for divers was through trial and error. Now, presumably, that was done with the consent of the uh, Navy divers, but they do a lot of experiments on military personnel that they never get informed consent from. And that's the, that's the key. They were not willing to pull that back. They were not willing to put a restraining order on these experiments as they were going on at the University of North Carolina. And they wonder, is there anything that's going to be done to keep our government from doing something like this again? And I think the most cynical thing about this entire study is that this first couple that Cheryl Atkinson reports on, they thought that they, were, they were a support group from the government that was going to help them go through the process. Support was the acronym that they used, just like the Patriot Act. Support, actually, they were not a support group. Support actually stood for surfactant, surfactant positive airway pressure and pulse oximetry randomized trial. They put this in a constrained acronym just so they could come to these people and say, we're a support group and not be flat out lying to them with their fingers crossed behind their back. And yet it was a lie. You cannot ethically 
you cannot ever get conformed consent for human experimentation that is life-threatening, that presents 